A warm welcome to VTU e Sectiona e-learning center. In this video, we are going to continue the module 3 of artificial neural network, static learning theory, support vector machines and radial basic function networks. So, this video is going to cover up the uh, remaining part of support vector mechanisms and uh, radial basic functions network. The support vector machines applications to image classification. As we are aware about that, we have been come across with the statistical learning theory and we have seen the examples of support vector machines for the linear and nonlinear functions. So, this video is going to continue with an application to image classification. The applications which is related to the images and how it is going to get classified for the support vector machines that is going to be detailly seen from this video. Let me go into the video. So, extending the support vector machines to the multi class case. What is the multi class case? Due, the, due to the high dimensionality of the features space involved, the generalization performance of image classification algorithms is rather poor. So, the indexing and retrieval of image classification algorithm and the collection, the image collections in the world wide web is a major challenge which may ongoing research programs are addressing. So, due to the extremely high generalization performance, even in the absence of prior knowledge, when compared with other technologies, support vector machines provides much promise in such applications. So, in this section, we are going to uh, describe the applications of a support vector machine to the problems of image classifications. Since image will fail or it may fall into more than one class, one need to adopt the classical binary support vector machines algorithm to work for the multi class cases. So, the approach is going to be followed which is called one against the others, one against the others. Here the term C different hyperplans are constructed for different spaces or different classes of C where each hyperplan separates the class in question from all other classes. So, therefore, there are n different decision functions for y of j of x. When this y of j of x may be in between the j value may varies. It may be greater than or equal to 1 as well less than or equal to the value c that is going to be get generated. So, this thing can be taken into the form of y j of x is equal to the sign of summation of i is equal to 1 to the number of support vectors n with the lambda value and d and the kernel function k of x comma x i plus b. So, the class c j is assigned to a point x. We are going to assign the point x. If I am going to assign the point x so that it becomes j is equal to average of the maximum j's of y j of x. That is going to be the terminology which is going to be get fixed over. This is going to be called as one against the other. So, let me discuss about this description of images with the data set. So, as a coral stock photo collection, so the data under consideration comprises images from the coral stock photo collection with some 200 classes, each with of 100 images. So, two database were derived from the original collections as we are going to describe in this particular thing. One is going to be called as coral 14 and one more is coral 7, coral 14 and coral 7. Let us see about the first database coral 14. The first database was named as coral 14 
with 14 classes and 1400 images. That means nothing but 100 images per category. So, we are going to make 14 categories over there. Each category which is going to be consisting of 100 images. So, 14 into 100 becomes 1400 images that is going to be get present over there. So, here when we are going to the classes where uh, from the original coral classifications as like air shows, bears, elephants, tigers, Arabian horses, polar bears, African speciality animals, cheetahs, leopards, jaguars, ba bald eagles, mountains, fields, deserts, sunrise, sunset, night scenes. Like that we are going to take the 14 different classification that is going to be called as 14 different classes. So, this database has many outliers deliberately it is going to be get retained. So, the authors has to decide that this database has many outliers which were deliberately retained. So, if you are going to see about this the figure which is shows this particular 14 coral 14 which consisting of a sample of data have shown over there. A sample of figures from this coral 14 database has been shown over here as air shows that is nothing but the flight air shows are going to be present over there and some, some different beers are going to get present over here. Okay. So, different varieties of air shows and different varieties of beers are being shown over there. So, coming to the second database, if you are going to see about the second database, the second database which is going to be called as Coral 7. So, the 7 database was collected as Coral 7 had newly designed categories. There were 7 classes and 2670 images, 2670 images are going to be get present over there, okay, which consisting of the classes as consisting of airplanes, birds, boats, buildings, fish, people, vehicle, etc, etc. Like that it is going to be shown over there. Example, if you are going to see about it, this is going to be a sample images for the Coral 7 database, which is showing the category of peoples and a vehicle. Okay, we are going to see about the people and vehicles are going to be shown over the different varieties of peoples and different variety of vehicle car C A R car has been taken as an example over here. So, this is going to be a coral 7 and this is going to be coral 14 example files. So, this two different example files which are going to be having a selection of kernel as we know that the selection of a proper kernel is critical to the problem of maximizing the performance of a support vector mission. Okay. So, as we have already studied that two kernels commonly employed are polynomial <coughs> and Gaussian. Polynomial and Gaussian. Okay. So, the polynomial is nothing but the kernel function polynomial of k comma sorry x comma y is equal to x dot y plus 1 to the power of p polynomial and Gaussian kernel which have been taken as k suffix g which is going to be a function of x dot y is equal to exponential of minus rho x minus y modulus of square. So, where rho is the order of polynomial, the rho is the order of polynomial which have been taken over here. This polynomial which controls the spread of Gaussian, which is going to control the spread of Gaussian and the level 2, the L2 which is going to be norms is going to be assured. So, that the classifier that employs the particular k of p the k of p have a polynomial decision function where those that employs a Gaussian kernel yields a Gaussian radial basic function classifier. Okay. So, it is going to deal about the particular function. So, as noted for this case of Gaussian radial bias so basis function classifiers the support vector, the support vector mission is going to be indeed a radial basic function network, indeed a radial basic function network. So, that where 
the polynomial port vector corresponds to the centers. So, the number of support vector is going to be the number of centers and the weights lambda i and the bias are chosen automatically using the so, uh, support vector machines learning procedure which is going to be get automatically chosen from the support vector machine learning procedure. So, this procedure which is going to give an excellent results when compared with the Gaussian radial bias function network which is going to be trained with the non support vector machine methods. Okay. So, we are going to take about this uh, kernel uh, general uh, kernels which is going to be taken into k sub x d or b f of x comma y that is going to deal about the exponential of minus polynomial function of d of x comma y where d is going to be a distance measure the d is going to be a distance measure in the input space. So, that the extensive use has been made of x square measures for the histogram comparisons. Okay. So, this histogram comparisons if you are going to take about that one d x square nothing but d suffix x square of x comma y is equal to summation of x i minus y i square by x i plus y i. So, another alternative in this L 1 distance is going to be d L 1 d suffix L 1 of x comma y is equal to summation of x i minus y i where i is equal to taken the value which gives the Laplacian or B of values. Okay. Such a way the selection of kernels are going to be get present in this particular values. So, as I said already as we know that we are going to have the critical uh, kernel to the problem of maximizing the performance of the SVM. So, we are going to provide the two kernel commonly employed as polynomial and Gaussian polynomial and Gaussian from that we are going to take about this particular presence of the uh, general kernels such a way the general kernels have been measured in terms for the histogram comparisons as we are going to take about this values for the L1 distance and X square distance as we have been come across about this particular things understand. So, let me see about the Gaussian radial by a basic function classifiers and SVMs. So, here the support vector machine is going to be indeed as I said already it is going to be an indeed for a radial bias function network where the centers corresponds to the support vector. The centers always it corresponds to the support vector and the number of centers is the number of support vectors. The number of centers are going to be equal to that of the number of support vectors. As the weights and bias are all uh, are chosen automatically using the learning process. So, the weights and bias are going to be chosen automatically with the help of SVM learning procedure. As this procedure is going to give an excellent results when compared with the Gaussian radial bias function network which is going to be trained with the non SVM methods. Okay. Such a way the Gaussian radial function classifiers are going to be used with the SVMs. So, let me see about an experiment. Okay. So, we will see few experiments over here. I am going to select experiment number 1. So, in a, a, a preliminary experiment we have come across over the, the 1400 corals images samples have been taken for the coral 14 which are going to be divided into 924 training and 476 test samples. I am going to divide this one into 924 training sets and 476 test samples. Such a way we are going to divide that one. For coral 7 the 2670 samples were been divided into 1375 trainings and remaining are going to be taken as test samples of each values where setting the C value is equal to 100. So, that the results are going to be get given over here in this particular tabular column. So, for all kernels except the linear one which is going to run separately was enforced to the training set. 
So one can note that the use of x square RBF kernels brings the error down around 30% to the range of 15 to 20%. Understand? So that this improvement or improved performance can be attributed to a proper choice of the metric as well as the excellent generalization ability of the support vector machines. So, when compared to this uh, other classifier designs such as K nearest neighbor, one can find the SVM performance to be almost twice as good. Such a way we are going to do this one. So, if you are going to see about that coral 14 as 36.3 of linear and polynomial 2 order 2 35.3 and the Gaussian RBF is going to be 30.5 and the x value 14.7 and L1 level is going to be 14.5. For the coral 7 the linear is going to be 42.7 then polynomial order 2 38.9 the Gaussian RBF value is going to be 32.2 and x value becomes 21.6 and Laplacian RBF L1 value becomes 20.5 such a way is going to be get improved. So, as when compared to the other classifier design such as the K nearest, one can find the performance of this SVM to be almost twice as good. Understand? So, let me see about one more uh, experiment, the second experiment. In this uh, second series of experiment, the thing has been introduced with non-Gaussian kernels of the form K of x comma y is equal to exponential of minus polynomial d of a comma b x comma y d of a comma b d suffix a comma b of x comma y where if you are going to see about this d of d a, a, a d suffix a comma b of x comma y is equal to summation of x i to the power of a minus y i to the power of a modulus to the power of b note this that this kernel has a decay rate around 0 that is given by d suffix a comma b of x comma 0 is equal to summation of x i modulus to the power of a b. So, we see that from a Gaussian RBF kernel a b is equal to 2 which is a factor that determines the decay rate. So, smaller value of this product would imply a slower decay rate. So, as we come across with the, a Mercer's condition which is going to be satisfies only if b is going to be greater than 0 or less than 2. This condition has to be get taken because we have selected a b is equal to 2. Under this status, under this condition, the Mercer's condition is going to be satisfied only with b is equal to greater than 0 as well less than 2. So, the constant has no effect on the satisfaction of this Mercer's condition. So, that in this experiment in addition to a linear SVM, we can employ three kernels Gaussian b is equal to 2, Laplacian b is equal to 1 and sublinear b is equal to 0.5. We can make it as b is equal to 2 as Gaussian, b is equal to 1 as Laplacian and b is equal to 0.5 as non uh, sublinear. Okay, such a way we are going to make that one. So, first the image data was transferred using a renormalization. For this RBF kernels, they chosen c is equal to 300 and polynomial is equal to 1. So, that they close to x i dash is equal to lambda into x i dash to the weight dash. So, weight dash is equal to weight by lambda, where lambda is going to be taken as a renormalization parameter. Understand? So, for this condition, for this condition, in addition to a linear SVM, as I said, we can employ three kernels, Gaussian, Laplacian and sublinear. As I said about this, Gaussian value is going to be b is equal to 2 and Laplacian value is going to be b is equal to 1 and sublinear value is going to be b is equal to 0.5. So, for this experiment, for this experiment, uh, images in coral 14 
and coral 7 were divided into training test and validation sets we are going to give divide into three as i said training test and validation sets uh, of roughly uh, one third of each like that we can take about the size so the mode of experimentation was as uh, using a specific renormalization parameter value so support vector obtained from the training set were tested on the validation set so that what happened the lambda re uh, normalization parameter that yields the best results on the validation set which was the used to find the uh, SVM value using both the training and the validation set. So the super vector, the, sorry, the support vector thus obtained were finally tested on the test sets. So typically what happened, the normalization values for lambda were 10 to the power of minus 4 or 10 to the power of minus 2, 1 comma 10 with the optimal value which has been used or being used is going to be 10 to the power of minus 2 and 1 usually. So we can use a different values as I said it may be 10 to the power of minus 4, 10 to the power of minus 2 or 1 or 10 but optimized value we are going to take that one optimization value which is going to be being 10 to the power of minus 2 and 1 usually we are going to use this value. For this Gaussian RBF the renormalization parameter which is going to be chosen where 10 to the power of minus 4, 0 0.0025, 0 0.01, 0 0.04, uh, 0 0.16, 1 comma 100. Such a way these values are going to be get chosen over there. So based on this chosen values, this table which is going to give, uh, provide the final results which is going to be averaged over three different train validate test partitions of the two data sets. We are going to have about this one as different trained data, validated data, test data, partitions of these two data sets. Okay. So kernel which is going to be specified over there as the value NSV. Okay. So NSV is nothing but number of support vectors A is equal to 1, A is equal to 0.5, A is equal to 0.25. For that, what is the linear value which have been specified over here? For that, it is going to be 36.4, 22.2, 15.2. Two. And for the Gaussian RBF value, as I said, we have taken three things, Gaussian RBF, Laplacian RBF, sublinear RBF. So, Gaussian B is equal to 2, Laplacian B is equal to 1, sublinear B is equal to 0.5. So, for this A is equal to 1, the Gaussian is going to be 32.7, linear is going to be 17.4, sublinear is going to be 13.7. When A is equal to 0.5, if you are going to see about that, the value is going to be 17.1 for the Gaussian value, 12.7 for the Laplacian B is equal to 1 and which is going to be 12.6 for the B is equal to 5 by sublinear RBF value. When A is equal to 0.125, which is going to be 14.4 as a linear one, 12 is going to be for B2, 11.5 for B1, 12.5 for B is equal to 0.5. When B is A is equal to 0 0.125, which is going to be 14.3 linear value, 12 for B is equal to 1, 11.5 for B is equal to 1, 12.5 for B is equal to 0.5. And when A is equal to 0, 0.0, the linear value becomes 18.4. You can see the changes which is going to be there, which is going to be a changes. And B is equal to 16.5, B is equal to 1 is equal to 16.5. For B 0.5, it's 16.5. So the average error rates of this coral 14 database has been shown in this tabular column like this. Let me see about the average error rate on the coral 7 database. So move on to this coral 7 database. So the same way we are going to classify this also as A is equal to 1, A is equal to 0.5, A is equal to 0.25, A is equal to 0.125 and A is equal to 0, 0.0. So here we are going to consider the same kind of parameters B is equal to 2 for Gaussian, B is equal to 1 for Laplacian, B is equal to 0 0.05 for sublinear RBFs. And 
when we are going to take about this a is equal to 1 for coral 7, the linear is going to be 42.5 and b2 is equal to 40.4, b1 is equal to 22.8, b is equal to 0 0.5 is nothing but 19.2. When a is equal to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, the linear value becomes 28.4, the Gaussian parameter becomes 21.2, the Laplacian parameter will become 17.4 and sublinear value becomes 18.5. When we are going to take b is equal to 0 0.25, the linear value becomes 23.6, the Gaussian value becomes 17.6, the Laplacian value 16.3 and sublinear will 18.8. When a is equal to 0.125, the linear becomes 26.9, the Gaussian value becomes 28.6, you can see the difference. It becomes 19 for b is equal to 1 and 19.3 for b is equal to 0.5 sublinear RBF. And when a is equal to 0, 0.0, the linear value becomes 33.2, see the difference. You can observe the difference from the stable average error rate on the coral 7 database. So, it becomes 24.2 for b is equal to 2, 24.2, 24.2 which remains same for b is equal to 2, b is equal to 1 and b is equal to 0.5 for Gaussian, Laplacian and sublinear RBF. So, here we can see that, notice that the excellent results are going to be obtained when b is equal to 1, a is equal to 0.25, b is equal to 1 and a is equal to 0.25. So, these values are going to be the excellent results. So, the error rate of linear support vector machines is only 30 percent higher than that of the best RBF based SVM so, uh, support vector machines. So, while it computationally requirements are ordered of magnitude which is going to be less than that of the most efficient RBF based SVMs. So, that this makes a linear SVM attractive for such an application. So, further this application demonstrates the SVM in a general fine widespread applicability in the histogram based image classifications as we are already aware about that one. So, such a way this super vector mechanism is going to be machines are going to be attractive for such an applications so that it can be generally find a widespread availability in the histogram based image classifications. So, let me continue this with the next topic that is going to be called as radial basis function networks, radial basis function network. So, we now move on to this discussion of the classes of feed forward neural network which is going to be called as radial bias function networks RBF ends. So, that computes activations at the hidden neural in a way that is different from what we have seen in case of feed forward neural networks. So, rather than uh, employing an inner product uh, between the input vector and the weight vector, so the hidden neuro uh, activations are going to be there in the RB offense are computed using a exponential of a distant measure. So, usually the Edelian distance or a weight norms uh, which is going to be present over there for this distance measurement between the input vector and a prototype vector associated with a hidden neuron. So, let me introduce the basic architecture of this radial bias function network in the context of, uh, context of interpolarization uh, theory. So, uh, we will subsequently explore the deep connections between this class of networks and regularizations theory uh, which was uh, briefly introduced uh, in the further chapters uh, in the sorry in the previous chapter actually in the context of statistical learning as in the initial uh, module 3 we have come across about the statistical learning in that it has been given a explanation. So, let me uh, introduce or let me get into this particular radial basic function network. So, radial basic function network which is going to be uh, consisting of a feed forward neural network which is going to compute the activations at the hidden neuron 
which is going to be using an exponential of a distance measure between the input vector and a prototype vector that characterize the signal functions at a hidden neuron. Originally introduced into the literature for the purpose of interpolarization of data points on a finite training set. So, the radial bias function network introduced into the literature for the purpose of interpolarization of data points on the finite training set. And the interpolarization problem, let me see about this interpolarization problem. It is going to be called as exact interpolar, exact interpolarate. When this radial bias function networks were originally introduced into the literature for the purpose of interpolarization of the data points on a finite training set, in an interpolarization problem, one is given a training data set of input output pairs. So, which is going to be dealt as t is equal to x suffix k comma d suffix k, where x of k is nothing but subset of the function, the radial function, whereas d k is nothing but subset of the radial function. So, then we can solve the exact interpolarization problem. So, we have to search for a map f that takes each input of x of x k and maps it exactly onto the desired output of d comma k, the data of k. So, that we are going to take the function f of x is equal to d k, where k is equal to 1, 2, etc. up to q. So, that the throughput we assume that the target points are scalar for simplicity of expositions and leave the extension to the vector output cases as an exercise for the readers we are, which has been mentioned in such a way in the textbook. So, for this purpose of performing the interpolarization, the radial bias function, the radial bias function network assumes a set of exactly q basic functions pi of x minus xi which are nonlinear and whose arguments involves an edulian distance measure okay so which measures the distance between the applied input x and a training data point xi so this map f is then generated by taking a weight linear superposition of this bias functions which can be explained as f of x is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to q the weight matrix of pi of x minus x i. This is a value which has been mentioned which is going to map into generate by using a superposition of this function. So, it yields this data. Understand? So, let me see the exact interpolarization equation, how it is going to be get present over there. So, in generally substituting the condition for exact interpolarization form from this equation f of x is equal to summation of i is equal to 1 to q weight matrix pi of x minus x i, we are going to yield this expression. Okay, we are going to take that one. So, the interpolarization condition which is going to be get mentioned over here is going to be d k. In order to recast this system of equation into the matrix form of definitions, okay, so which can be introduced, we can introduce d is equal to d1, comma d2, comma etc. up to dq transverse and weight matrix w is equal to w1 comma w2 comma up to etc up to the wq transpose. So, that what happened the pi value totally it is going to be get changed as like this it is going to be get created the matrix can be get created like this. So, the above equation if you are going to see about this above equations which is going to create this one. So, which can be rewritten compactly as we can come to know about that. So, d is equal to pi transverse w and since pi is a symmetric value and a large class of functions 
we are going to take it as into pi into w matrix d is equal to pi w matrix understand so with the help of this we are going to calculate the gaussian function so it's going to be mckelly functions the mckelly function since as we are aware about that the pi is symmetric a large class of functions pi is going to be non singular provided by the training data points are going to be distinct so this includes the gaussian function this includes the gaussian function what is the gaussian function uh, specifies over here the pi of x is equal to exponential of minus x comma c square by 2 sigma square where sigma is going to be greater than 0 and x and c are the functions or it's going to be the radial functions subset of radial functions so from this we are going to calculate the multi quadratics we are going to calculate the multi quadratics the multi quadratics is going to be taken pi of x is equal to x square plus c square to the power of half where c is going to be greater than 0 and during x and c are going to be subset of radial function and with that we are going to calculate the inverse multi quadratics inverse inverse multi quadratics here we are going to deal about that one pi of x is equal to 1 over x square plus c square to the power of half where the same condition remains over there as multi quadratic as c is equal to 0 whereas x and c are going to be subset of the radial function such a way the mckelly function is going to be classified for this gaussian functions multi quadratic function and inverse multi quadratic function with the value pi of x with the different expressions okay which is going to give the mckelly functions coming to this how to solve the interpolation inter or uh, interpolarization problem the interpolarization problem can be solved with the help of this particular expression how it will be so we we are going to choose pi approximately ensures its invertibility and we can solve for a weight matrix with the help of the above equation already we have come across over there what is that above equation we have come across over there as d is equal to pi of pi into w so from this we can calculate w is equal to d pi inverse or pi inverse we can make it over there with the help of this we can make it out w is equal to weight matrix is equal to pi inverse d pi inverse d so from this we are going to from this equation we are going to derive we are going to derive this one so the equation which have been chosen a pi value is going to be correctly ensures the invertibility and we can solve this weight matrix w is equal to sigma pi inverse into d so this equation permits us to find a set of weights such as the interpolating surface generated will pass through exactly the every data point so the commonly considered form of pi uh, which, which 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 we may justify in a subsequent sections okay i'll clarify that one so this form of pi is going to be the localized gaussian basic function so that which is going to be taken into pi of x is equal to exponential of minus pi my x minus mu modulus square by Two sigma square with a center mu, and where uh, sigma is going to be the spread factor, which has a direct effect on the smoothness of the interpolating function. Okay, the interpolating function is going to be present. The smoothness is going to be get present on that one. So, with the help of that, we are going to identify the architecture of the radial basis function network. Radial basis function network so uh, note that the exact interpolarator equation admits a network based interpretation as we have been shown in this figure so as in the standard feed forward neural network the input neurons are linear 
and transmits inputs to hidden neurons without any transformations. Okay. So, the hidden neurons, the inputs are going to be transferred into the hidden neurons without any transformations. As that the input vector x, the input vector x thus feeds forward to each hidden neurons. These are q hidden neurons, q hidden neurons, one of each bias functions are going to be get present over there. So, the exact interpolarate equation that each bias functions has a center at a training data point. If we assume the gaseous bias equation, so after computing the signal in accordance with equation, hidden node transmits these signals through the weighted data path, through the weighted data path to the linear output neuron, linear output neuron, which is going to sum up all this neurons and generates a output signal. Such a network is going to be called as radial bias uh, function network RBFN. Understand? So, as I said, the inputs, the x, the vector x, the speed forward to each hidden neurons, and these hidden neurons are going to be creating a each bias functions. Okay. So, the uh, Ex ex exact interpolar equation which is going to select each bias functions has a center mu value at a training data point and if assume that this Gaussian equation is going to be applicable for this after computing that the signal in occurrence with that equation the hidden nodes transmits this data transmits this data signal through a weighted path, through a weighted path. So, that the weighted path are going to be a linear output neurons, which is going to be get summed, which is going to be get summed up and generates an output signal. Such a function, which is going to be described as radial bias function network. Understand, radial bias function network. So, here we have to understand one, note that the essential difference between the standard feed forward neural network and the radial bias function network is that hidden neuron which computes signals based on distance of distance to data uh, training data points rather than the inner product rather than the inner product. So, which is going to be with the weight vectors, understand? So, the difference between the standard feed forward neural network and the radial bias function is that the radial bias function network which is going to uh, provide the feed forward that from hidden neuron compute signals based on the distance to the data, uh, training data points and rather than the inter product of this weight vectors. So, that the signal from each of the hidden neuron, hidden neurons are linearly superposed at an output neurons using a tunable weights. As per the tunable weights, it is going to be get provided from the hidden neuron space. So, that what happen? The hidden neurons do not have any bias. Although occasionally a bias weight is going to be added to the output linear neuron in a normal or in a more general form to the radial bias uh, function network. Such a way this radial bias function network is going to be get processed, it is going to be get operate. So, this is an architecture of a radial bias function network interpolar, okay, interpolator. Understand? So, shall we move on to the next topic, interpolarization prop example, a simple interpolarization example I am going to show. Before going ahead, let us consider interpolarization capability of an radial bias function network with a simple one dimensional example. 
So, in this example, we are going to assume a noisy data which is going to be scattered of q is equal to 10. Data points is going to be 10. About a generator function f of x is equal to 2 sin of x plus x. Such a way we are going to take it over there. Okay? So, assume that a noisy data scatter value q is equal to 10 data points. And I am going to take a generator as I said, I am going to take f of x is equal to 2 sin of x plus x. f of x is equal to 2 sin of x plus x. Such a way I am going to take it over there. So, in this graph, what I can say, the data scattered which can indicate yes, yeah, sm small triangles which can be get seen in the next slide. And along with that, it is going to generate a function of a small fine lines also. So, which is going to be shown with a thick lines. I am going to show that one in the next slide. Let me see about this. So, referring to this fit picture, which can be seen that a small line has been shown over there and a triangles are being shown over there. Here, we are going to take the sigma value is equal to 1 and one more is going to be sigma value is equal to 0.3 and we are going to consider two more sigma values also going to be there shortly we are going to see those things also over here. So, this data scatter which is going to be indicated by a triangle which is going to be indicated by a triangles if you are going to see about this triangles have been shown over here which have been indicated with a triangle. So, is along with the generating function which is going to be a fine line a fine line, I will take a another color so that it will be easy for you to understand where the colors goes on over there. A fine color which have been shown over there. Understand? So, this fine line and the small triangles which have been shown in this figure. So, the data scatter triangles and the generating functions have been shown in this figure. Okay? So, if you are going to see about this, and radial bias function network interpolarization network with 10 bias functions which is going to spread a spread factor sigma is equal to 1 sigma is equal to 1 and which is going to produce an interpolarization which is going to be shown by the thick line i am taking one more line which is going to be green in color that is going to be a thick line which is going to be a polarization line that is going to be an polarization interpolarization line. So, this interpolarization has been shown in a thick line with a green color. Okay? So, changing the spread to the bias function sigma value is going to be 0 0.3 which can heal an undulating interpolantin which has been shown in the next diagram. If you are going to see about that one you are going to see about that. I am taking this blue color to identify the triangles. Understand? And I am going to take a green color, sorry, red color to identify the thin fine line which is going to be generating function. Okay? So, here if you are going to see about this, the generating function is going to be remain such a way same value, such a same value is going to get present over there. Whereas, the interpolarization is going to be in a different, I am going to take the green color. If you are going to see about that, which is going to be get changed. Which have been changed over there. When you are going to see about, we are going to check about both the figure. So, the figure A, which is going to be having an sigma value is equal to 1. What is the sigma? Sigma is nothing but spread factor. The spread factor is equal to 1. Whereas, the figure B, the spread factor is equal to 0.3. So, which is going to having a variations. You can easily observe the undulating interpolant which is going to be shown over there in the green color. Which is going to be shown in the green color. Understand? And two more examples we are going to see about that one which is going to have the derivative square functions, derivative square functions, which is going to be shown in a thick curve, which is going to be shown in a thick curve. So, I am going to take a blue color to identify that this is a thick color which have been shown over there when the spread factor is equal to 1. 
spread factor is equal to 1 which have been shown clearly in this picture understand so and if you are going to see about the square of uh, derivative of this thick curve for this particular b the next when sigma is equal to or spread factor is equal to 0.3 this is going to be a undulant value which have been measured over here so the difference can be easily observed when spread factor is equal to 1 and spread factor is equal to 0.3 how this is going to be get differ so this shows the interpolating 10 data noisy point samples with the function of f of x is equal to 2 sin of x plus x value understand so with the help of this we want to make some understanding okay so uh, by making the spread factor smaller the function becomes increasingly non-smooth I hope that you may understand about that by using this figure we can come to know about that when the spread factor is equal to 1 it is going to be somewhat smooth curves are going to get present over there when spread factor is equal to 1 if you are going to observe this a green color it is going to be somewhat smooth whereas when spread factor reduces an indolent is going to be get produced over there as well as if you are going to see about that here also the same process it is not smooth over there it is not going to be smooth a non smooth factor is going to be get observed over there so that the primary objective if you have to understand about this one so the primary objective being to achieve 100 percent mapping 100 percent mapping so we have to accuracy on the 10 data points rather than smoothness of the interpolation so that the derivative of an interpolant provides a natural measure of the slope and helps to quantify its oscillator behavior oscillatory behavior okay that so that taking the derivatives of this functions we have to square them to make them positive everywhere and then measuring the areas under those curves provides a nice measure of non-smoothness the degree or the greater the area okay so the more non-smooth the function so that what happened this is to be get brought out very clearly in the picture I hope that you people may understand about this it's going to be very clearly mentioned in this picture okay so if you can see about this and this this plots the area under the square of derivatives of this function for this spread factor 1 and spread factor 0.3 which have been shown very clearly in this diagram okay so it's going to be brought out very clearly that which plots the area under the square of the derivative of this function square factor uh, spread factor sigma is equal to 1 and spread factor sigma is equal to 0.3 so notice that how the curve is going to be so smooth as relatively small area under its square derivative for the spread factor sigma is equal to 1 whereas the curve for the spread factor 0.3 is non-smooth with a large area it is going to be a non-smooth with a large area under the square derivatives curve understand or not so this figure both as shown the exact value how actually it is going to be there so that we have to always have the spread factor value should be higher okay so we will continue this in the next video thank you thank you for watching